Hello, my name is Jessie Marie Rodriguez, and my story is called Ghetto Kids. <sighs> Ding dong, the doorbell of edible arrangements rings. I run from the back of the, ki the kitchen to the front desk, where I see four little chamacos. Two of them are tall, chubby boys. They look about 15, 13 years old. A regular size look looking boy, about 12. And then a tiny twig looking one, about 10. I can tell that they're all brothers because they all have the same dark Mexican skin and the same facial structure too. What's up guys, how can I help you? I asked them. And Chava, the, the littlest boy, twinkles his little eyes and says, can we please have some free samples? I laugh at the cute boy. And then I go to the back to grab some chocolate covered apples. I'm not supposed to give any free samples to the kids that hang out at the park across the street that are obviously not customers. Normally, I wouldn't. But these kids were different. They were at the park every day. At first, I would think, hmm, Maybe they kicked it at the park every day after school. But sometimes, I see them even when I got out at 11 p.m., still with their school bags. So it just didn't make sense. Until one day, I find them with their parents. Their mother, 5'2", Mexican, looks just like her boys, except she got chipped teeth, curly hair, and a lazy eye. The father stood next to her, tall, 6'2", slim, dark Mexican with curly hair sticking out of his baseball cap. He looked like a sloppy version of Don Ramon from El Chavo del Ocho. <laughs> they were pushing a shopping cart filled with suitcases, a broom, grocery bags, blankets, and pillows. So then I realized these kids were homeless and they had tweaker parents. I started to get in trouble for always giving them free samples. It wasn't something that I would eventually get fired for. It was just something fairly unusual to my coworkers since they found them more annoying than anything else. My supervisor would say, Jesse, your kids are here. They want free samples. And, and then twinkle her little eyes, trying not to offend me. I'll shoo the kids away and say, guys, you know I can't give you samples right now. So, at the end of my day, I would bag up all the dip fruit that we'll normally throw away, and I'll give it to them. I felt like Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, and this made them my Oompa Loompas. <laughs> they were always bugging me after that. Not in a bad way, though. They were cool bugs. They would run up to me whenever they saw me on my lunch break. At first, we'll talk about little things like music and games, but then when I asked them about school, they all seem to be fucking up. Even the second oldest one. <laughs> Even the second oldest one, who was so well-mannered. He's a student at Chula Vista Middle School, and he always got sent to O-Room for getting into fights. The oldest one was a freshman at Chula Vista High School, and he already got kicked out. I tripped out when they told me all their stories because they were a lot like mine. They even went to the same school as I did. My older brother, Freddie, used to always talk about O-Room. He was there all the time. It was basically his homeroom. It was a place in middle school where you get sent when the teachers get tired of your shit. It's a classroom with all white walls and only two pictures on the wall, Bob Marley and Che. <laughs> they had cardboard dividers taped to every desk, signifying no talking all day. With teachers ki kicking back at their desk, not even teaching anything. Freddie would, always, would mostly talk about his lunch breaks. They'd just give him a little peanut butter jelly sandwich and 30 minutes to talk amongst his O-room peers. He would also tell me about the big ass red O that he would have to carry out whenever he used the bathroom, which was the only chance that you got to get out of that room. My brother Freddie 
is ADD. So he really annoyed the teachers. He never did his homework, and he loved to, to disturb class by yelling random stuff like, yeah, buddy, you like that? And the most hilarious impersonation of a white man from his favorite YouTube video. And most of all, he loved to fight. Freddie hated school since he was in kindergarten and thought that he was too cool for it all. Me and Freddie were only two grades apart, so it wasn't long until I was in middle school and it was my turn to get sent to O-Room for getting in a fight with the biggest trolla in school. I was so excited to see how that room really looked like. It reminded me of the first grade when I was excited for my first detention. I just wanted to be like my big brother, I guess down for my shit. We were Americanized Mexicans, so we were always trying to prove ourselves, either to the Mexican cholo kids or to the black hood kids. There was really no difference. I loved hearing people say, you're just like fucking Freddy. He was the only one that I could ever look up to. Him and my little brother Angel were the only ones that knew about all the bullshit that we had to go through growing up. Parents on drugs can put you in some crazy places and situations. One of the messed up babysitters we used to have used to pin me down and let his little brother kick my ass, then would let me go like a dog to try to kick his. I've basically been in free-spirited boxing since I was four years old. So it was pretty much in mine and my brother's nature to eventually get into our own intentional fights. I don't know about others, but I know that I'll kick some ass before I get pinned down again. I picked fights with the, with the kids that picked on the little people and thought that they ran shit. Those are the people that got me mad. Boy or girl, I would badmouth them until embarrassment. And Orum was just the collector of all of us hot-headed little kids. The first day of Orum, I was excited. But pretty soon, I was bored as hell. I remember thinking, who, how am I supposed to be a better person sitting in this room, not learning anything? Is, I was there for a week, and that week was a huge waste of my time. And now that I look back at it, I think to myself, why did the school do this? And how did, the, how did the education system allow this? Somebody just one day said, hey, I know. Let's put all the bad kids in one room where they won't learn anything all day, but still have to attend during school hours. And they'll stay stupid and never gain the knowledge that they need to know before high school. Yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> but hey. In California, all dogs go to heaven. So I was still gonna go to high school the next year. <laughs> I was going stupid as fuck, but I was still gonna be kicking with my friends. <laughs> Whoever made up O-Room just knew that eventually all these kids would get kicked out of their high school and get sent to a continuation school. Eventually ditch every day and if they're old enough, drop out or end up sarbed in juvenile hall for having too many absences and being a minor. Getting to know my Oompa Loompas and learning that after six years of me leaving Chula Vista Middle School, O-Room still exists, that was just crazy. I absolutely don't find the sense in this punishment. Why didn't anybody ever try talking to me? Or why isn't anybody other than me talking to them? Why didn't I ever get any cool mentor that would drastically change my life? Why, why did the leaders of Chula Vista Middle School think that all of our problems will be solved by us sitting in a room to supposedly analyze what we did wrong? How can these people think that badass little kids would eventually find the light at the end of the tunnel if the tunnel was never, if the light was never shined in the first place. Meeting these four little chamacos completely opened my eyes. Seeing young people in similar shoes that I once walked in, 
I quit my job at Edible Arrangements. I started volunteering at the World Beat Cultural Center, where I found people that have big dreams and keep on accomplishing each and every one of them. They inspire me to accomplish each of mine. I still spend time with my own palumpas, and I teach them the many options that they have in the world. I take them to the movies and play musical instruments with them. Those kids are how my life could have easily been. That could have been my parents with a shopping cart. That is not where I want to see those boys. Freddie was, was the one that I wanted to be like, but I want those boys to look up to me. As soon as I met them, as soon as I seen me and them, I realized I must be a better Jesse Marie. And give it up for Jesse Marie Rodriguez.